Joshua, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. It's the sixth book of the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and then Joshua. The sixth chapter, sixth book of the Old Testament, and it's Joshua chapter number one. And we would like to read that chapter this morning uh, using our Bible app to receive uh, uh, Joshua chapter one this morning. Starting in verse number one. Joshua. Joshua chapter one. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand, or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you vigils, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. And to the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them until the Lord hath given your brethren rest, as he hath given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses the Lord's servant gave you on this side Jordan, toward the sun rising. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Father, I thank you for this passage of scripture and ask in Jesus' name that you will speak to our hearts, allow our spirit man to receive that which you have prepared for us, no matter what our physical man or natural man is going through. Be with each person who is here today, Lord. Help us to share this sermon with others. The recognition that it is our desire to find the word of the Lord in this statement. Be strong and of good courage. We ask you these things in Jesus' name. Praying that you help us to step out of the way that you may do that perfect work. And ask you once again, Lord, honor us with your presence as we honor you with our hearing, our receiving, and our obedience to the word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. This passage of scripture this morning, uh, very quickly I'd like to uh, remind you of what it is that the Lord's trying to tell us here. In the first 18 verses, three times, I'm sorry, in the first nine verses, three times, the Lord says, be strong and of good courage. The last verse of the chapter, someone speaking to the 
congregation talking to Elijah's, I mean, talking to Joshua says, be strong and of good courage. So four times in 18 verses, Joshua hears the words, three times from the Lord, one time from the people that he was leading, be strong and of good courage. I would challenge you this morning, and the sermon in a nutshell, if you want to leave now, be strong and of good courage. I hope you stay and hear what the word has, the Lord has for us today, but that's the sermon this morning. Be strong and of good courage. When you begin looking at these, and we have not forgotten, we've been going through the heroes of the Old Testament. We went through Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. We went through Joshua, I mean through, jo uh, through Joseph. Uh, we're beginning to start with Moses. We did a little bit on Moses' life, and we're going to continue with that study as soon as we finish these. Uh, next week, Lord willing, we'll have a Father's Day sermon, but after that, we'll get into our heroes of the Bible again and begin going along with them. We wanted to encourage you concerning the uh, situation we're going through right now, the relevance of the Word of God in the situation we're going through right, right now, whether it's a physical problem or a financial problem, uh, it always affects us spiritually. I would encourage you to recognize that doesn't need to be the case. If you're going through a physical problem, it doesn't have to affect you spiritually. It may, but it doesn't have to. I've heard people in service before, never had a migraine headache in my life. I understand that ahead of time, and so I'm going to talk to you about something I don't know a whole lot about. But I've heard of people who had migraine headaches who said, I can't even hear in church because my head is spinning so bad. I understand that. And I understand that that is an infirmity that happens that is overwhelming. But I would also say that in the name of the Lord, we can have the Spirit of God help us so that He can even help us through that circumstance. And so I encourage you this morning to realize that when you're going through a problem, whether it's physical or whether it's financial, don't allow it to bother your spirit. And the way you do that is begin every morning with the Spirit of the Lord saying, God, I'm giving you this day. It is in your hands, and I am trusting you to take care of me and help me to be, to be pleasing to you. If we'll do that every single day, and then begin that day recognizing that day has been given to the Lord as we sing the song, this is the day which the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I know I say this a lot, perhaps more after I got older than I did when I was younger, but I challenge you today, a lot of people planned on going someplace today on Saturday, yesterday, and didn't wake up this morning. A lot of people yesterday morning planned on doing something through that day and halfway through the day or partway through the day found out their life was over. I would challenge you to realize that can happen to any one of us. And so what we do is say, Lord, I praise you for this day, knowing that you have given me this day as a blessing and as a reward. I would encourage you today to, to recognize that the word of the Lord has promised us that when he gives us that day, he gives us something to do that day. And what we do more, more important than anything else is to praise God, honor him for the gift of the day. Encourage yourself to know that the Lord has given you that day to praise and honor and glorify Him. And most importantly is your relationship with God, recognizing I have a connection to you and you gave me this day and I want to live uprightly before you. When you receive the day, then trust God to take care of you in that day. As that servant says, and as we've just now brought it to you in the book of Joshua, three times the Lord tells him, be strong and of good courage. Very, very quickly here setting up uh, where Joshua is at mentally or emotionally at this point in time. He has been an aide uh, to Moses for several years, uh, 40 of them at least. Uh, Moses at 80 years old comes back to Egypt. He tells Pharaoh, let my people go. And from that point in time, uh, Joshua kind of attaches himself to Moses and begins uh, serving him and acting as an aide to him. And so Joshua for 40 years has been uh, in second place, if you want to, to Moses. Now Aaron was a priest and he had a, a fellowship with, with Moses, obviously. But the person that Moses learned to rely on in a lot of cases was Joshua. And so not only did Moses rely on Joshua, but Joshua relied on Moses. Listen to the word of the Lord when he starts talking to Joshua in the book of Joshua, chapter 1. After the death of Moses, who served the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, I'm sure that Joshua knew that. Um, there could be some doubt to that because God buried Moses on Mount Nebo. Nobody knows where his, his grave was. Uh, the scripture makes it very plain that, that if they had known, uh, these people who were uh, uh, tending to idolatry may have set up some kind of a marker and begun uh, worshiping Moses because of what he had done rather than God. So God buries Moses in Mount Nebo and nobody knows where he's buried. But God is saying this passage of scripture to Joshua, in case you're doubting, Moses is dead. I buried him there. Moses is dead. And so you can't rely on him for any help anymore, but you can rely on me. 
Moses was a mighty man of God. We learn all we know about creation, about the flood, about the first uh, 4,000 years, 2,000 years of man's creation from Moses because of what he wrote in the Bible. We learn about the law. We learn about what pleases God, what displeases God. We learn about the exodus from Egypt, the trials that he had in Egypt. We learn about the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Joshua, I'm John, sorry, John, Joseph. We hear about all them. We know about all them because of Moses. Moses is the mighty man of God. He went up to the mountain. The Bible says that God spoke to him face to face as a man speaks to his friend. One passage of scripture says, Moses, after he came down from the mountain and after talking to God, had so much of the glory of the Lord on him that his face shined and the people said, we can't see you. Please put a veil over your face. Put a veil over you. And so the scripture says that when he come and talk to the people, he put a veil over his face so that they weren't blinded by the glory of the Lord in his face. And when he left them, he would go back into the presence of the Lord and take that veil off. That's a closeness with God. God is the one who said, I spoke to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. That's special. But Moses at this time is dead. He's gone. God has chosen to take him away uh, because of one act of disobedience. He's not allowed to go into the land of promise. Uh, he wanted to do that very badly, but he was not allowed. But God said, don't worry. I'm going to let Joshua carry them in. I'm going to let Joshua take them into the land of Israel. And I said Egypt did not. Into the land of Israel, the land of Cain. So the scripture said in this passage that God uh, begins in this story by telling Joshua, Moses is dead. What he's really telling him is, his history is over. Don't look to him except what he wrote for any, any more guidance, but rather look to me. I'm the God that brought Moses through all of that, and I will bring you through as well. As you look at this passage of Scripture, the Bible says uh, in verse number 3, Marvelous promise of the Lord, when he says, uh, verse 2, um, I'm going to give this people uh, the land over the Jordan, all this people under the land which I will give them, even to the ch children of Israel. Then he makes his promise to Joshua. Listen carefully what it is. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. From the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and all the great sea toward the going down of the sun, it shall be your course. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Marvelous promises of God. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you carry the people into the land of Canaan. Every, every place you step, I'm going to give you that land. No man is ever going to be able to stand before you. I'm going to make sure that I will take all of your opposition and I will set them aside as you walk in my word and in my will. Only be strong and very courageous. I have to tell you that the Lord was able and had chosen to tell me the very same thing, the very same way that did Joshua. It would be hard to doubt that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. I think that might be your thought as well. But if that is your thought as well, I'm going to remind you what the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews, the same thing this says in the book of Joshua, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. You and I can hold fast to the hand, the arm, the power of God, and though Jesus said, wherever you go, I will be with you. Wherever I direct you, I will provide for you. Every need you will ever have in your life, I'm going to take care of. I'm going to set your enemies aside so that they are not able to set you aside, not able to put you down. And I would encourage you this morning to recognize that by the grace of God, when we hear that, it should be also easy for us to hear, be strong and of good courage. Let me talk to you a minute here about uh, courage. Courage is not facing a situation without any fear. Say it again. Courage is not facing a situation without any fear. Courage is facing a situation knowing you have fear, but stepping out in the name of the Lord because you believe God's going to do what God said He's going to do. And I would encourage you today that what the Lord said, um, and we say it this way, the Bible doesn't say it this way, but it teaches this, where the Word of God says, where God guides, God provides. You be there, He's going to be there. Where He leads you, He's going to take care of you. Where He directs you, He's got something good for you. Be strong and of good courage. When you face that situation in your life where you have fear and you don't know about what's going to happen tomorrow, and all of us at one point in time in our life get to that situation. It may be in a moment where we think we're going to die. It may be in a moment when we heard some terrible news about, from the people around us. It may be in a moment when all at once we had a realization of something that we did not have before, or we had this huge idea of, 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 of doubt, wondering what's going to happen to us, and fear of the unknown. And God says, be strong and of good courage. I'm with you. I'm going to be there. I think you and I know because we've known the Lord, we've read the Word of God often enough and long enough that we realize Jesus never 
loses a battle. We might think of him going to the cross, and the scripture makes it very plain if we read what he says and believe what he says. He says, no man takes my life from me. I have power to lay it down and to take it up again. No man takes my life from me. If you read the scripture and pay attention to what it says, the Bible says when he died on the cross, the scripture says it this way, Jesus gave up the ghost. That means Jesus said, I've done everything I need to do, everything the Father told me to. I am now giving up the ghost. I am commending my, my hand, my spirit into your hands, God. And I will have the power to take up my life again. And in three days, I'm going to take up my life again. I'm going to live eternally. I would challenge you to realize that that's the same father and big brother Jesus that you have who says, I'll go with you in every situation. Be strong and of good courage. I heard a story not too long ago, and I'm not exactly sure who I've heard it from, some minister preaching, um, but I will tell you the story I've heard from him anyhow. A young man in, uh, in uh, of the war, Vietnam, and uh, they were in a particular battle that was um, devastating to them. Uh, they found themselves in a situation where they were at a lower elevation than the people above them. The people above them had uh, machine guns, had uh, uh, the area covered very well with a lot of personnel, and um, uh, the captain was talking to people and said, we need someone to take the initiative and charge that, that, that machine gun nest. And one young man raised his hand and says, I'll go. And he says, okay. He says, but I can't go for another hour and 14 minutes. And he says, you'll go, but you can't go for another hour and 14 minutes? He says, no. He says, I will go. Nobody else is willing to. I will go, but I won't leave for another hour and 14 minutes. And he said, what difference will an hour and 14 minutes make? And he said, because when I came to, <clears throat> when I came to war, my mother told me, 4 o'clock every day, I'll be praying for you. That's going to be here in Vietnam an hour and 14 minutes. And if you're going to be out in 14 minutes, and the story was that the, the, the captain had no other option, gave him that time. He went, charged the nest. By God's grace, he gave them the opportunity to have the victory. And that victory was won, won by the Lord. I would challenge you today to realize that when you give God anything, he is very capable of taking care of it. He will not lose it. I know you've heard this before. We used to have a commercial on TV. It may still be on it. I haven't seen it for many years. But it may still be on where the, where the commercial says, and I think it's Allstate, you're in good hands with Allstate. Let me tell you something. I've had Allstate insurance. It didn't work out that way. But I'm in good hands with God. What Jesus said is, no one will be able to take you out of my hand. He says it this way, no one can pluck you out of my hand. And when you and I put our lives in God's hands, He is willing, by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to take care of every circumstance we will ever face. In this passage of the scripture, Joshua was in a circumstance where he realized, I am now on my own without my mentor, Moses. If you look at the word of the Lord, you're going to find out the scripture said before this, uh, in the book of Numbers of Deuteronomy, it teaches us this, that Joshua Many times when Moses was up in the mountain or up that, that Joshua went with him, other times when Moses was talking to the people, that Joshua was in the tabernacle worshiping the Lord. He spent his time worshiping the Lord before he ever became a leader. But when he became a leader, he knew one thing very specifically and purely and perfectly, and that is, I'm not leading where I want to go. I'm leading where he tells me to go, and what he tells me to do was be strong and have good courage. Imagine, you've all heard the story of, of uh, uh, it's a myth, of Achilles and Achilles' heel and, and the idea that you're not going to ever uh, get killed, you know, about the story of Achilles and how he did end up dying. Um, I would challenge you to realize that uh, courage, when we know we cannot be hurt, is not the same kind of courage we have when we live our life day by day because we don't know if we can be hurt or not. I have learned and, and apologized to you. I said somebody, something to somebody in the last couple of weeks, and I've testified about this over and over again. I'm old now. I'm 70. I'm old now. What are they going to do to me? And I found out in the last few months, there's a lot they can do to me. There's a lot they would like to do to me. There's a lot they could do to me. But I challenge you today, as Jesus told the Pharisees, I will tell you today, until it is my day, until it's my time, they have nothing to do, nothing they can do to me. Jesus says it, this is one passage of scripture. Don't be afraid of the person who can kill a body. Be afraid rather of the person who will kill the body and cast the soul into hell. We spend much of our time fearing human beings, fearing men, what men can do to us. And I challenge you today, a reverential fear of what the Almighty God can and will do for us and to us 
is what we need to have. And be walk, walking before the Lord, strong and of a good courage. This passage of the scripture says, as the Lord told Moses, or told Joshua that three times, he was saying, I am going to be with you wherever you go, whatever you do. Later on in the story, and let me give you the story real quickly here. Later on in the story, as they get into the land of Canaan, five kings in the north decide, we hear what's happening in the south with Joshua and the children of Israel capturing city after city after city, and we're not going to put up with that. So all five of us are going to get together, we're going to get our armies, and we're going to go down and face Joshua in the south one-on-one. -on -one. And the Lord said, don't worry, I'm delivering them into your hands. Now this is what that means. Joshua, they're in the north, and in order for you to fight them on your own, you're going to have to travel north to get them. But I'm delivering them to you. I'm bringing them to your front yard, and I will take care of you there. You will defeat them in your front yard, and I'm going to give them in your hands. And you look at the story, you find out that's exactly what happened, that the Lord blessed with mighty work with Joshua and gave him the victory there. And quite literally, as the scripture says, um, whatever he did, he prospered at. You're not going to find, because of Joshua, anything in the book of Joshua and Judges where Joshua did something that was bad for his people or bad or against the Lord. You might find scriptures that you may misunderstand, and we can talk about that later on. But I would tell you that in every victory that God gave Joshua, he gave it to him because Joshua read the book, paid attention, listened to what God told him to do, and then God and he did what God told him to do. I would share this with you this morning. If you will be obedient to do what God tells you to do and leave all the consequences to him, he'll take care of all the consequences. He said it here, he says it in the Hebrews, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. Now here's another wonderful blessing. I'm closing with this thought this morning. Here's another wonderful blessing. Not only did God tell Joshua three times, which probably is enough, should be, three times in nine verses, be strong and of good courage. But the last words of the first chapter of Joshua come from the people that Joshua is leading. The people who know we just lost the greatest leader we ever had, Moses. Moses is dead. Moses is gone. We just lost the greatest leader we ever had, and let me put it another way, and now we've got Joshua. Now, they did not know what kind of leader Joshua was going to be, but I would challenge you, Joshua was a great leader, but they didn't know that. And so there was a doubt in their mind as to what Joshua was going to do, what he was going to be. But in this passage of Scripture, the Bible says that the Lord encouraged Joshua. So not only did he hear from the word of the Lord three times, be strong and of good courage. But the last thing the people who were following him said, we are going to follow you like Moses. Whoever doesn't listen to your word, we're going to kill him. We're going to set him aside because we want to be obedient to you and we know God is leading you. Only be strong and of good courage. And I would share with you this morning that if you had been in Joshua's shoes at that point in time, and I would tell you that uh, even mightier things that happened than, happened than this to Joshua, but they happened because he was obedient to the Lord. Obedience brings favor. If you want to be one of God's favorites, obey him. Listen to what he said in the word and obey him. There are people in the world who have been Christians for many, many years. They can't figure out why... Nothing ever goes right for them. Not a situation where we have a tribal battle. But nothing ever goes right for them. They can't figure out why. When God says, if you will obey me, you'll have my favor. I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. You heard the story of Job. I hope you have any have. You'll read the book of Job. You'll find it's a mighty story about a great trial that someone went through that no one, wondered, no one could, could believe. No one wants to do it. No one could believe that God brought him through. But God brought him through. And in the midst of all that, Job says... Though God slay me, even if God kills me, I'm going to trust him. With my dying breath, I'm going to trust him. And then he says, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and I will see him at the last day. Now that's hope of resurrection of the dead, that a man in the Old Testament who lived about the time that Abraham did, had a, a faith in God that many people around him did not, and God prospered him in every area, especially in the last part of his life where he had even more than he did when he was the wealthiest man among the men of the East in the first part of his life. So I would challenge you this morning to realize that what God is telling us and what God is telling you and I this morning, I hope we will believe it and hold on to it. In every circumstance in your life that you're going through right now, this is relevant right now. Be strong and of good courage. Trust God to take care of you. 
I'm going to bring you one of the hope that's kind of on a negative side, the back side of that. What else can we do? Do we give up on the Lord? Do we quit and decide to go another way? Jesus says in one passage of Scripture, when he told the people, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me, that many of his disciples went away saying, this is a hard saying. And so Jesus turned to the eleven and said to them, will you also go away? And Peter says, where are we going to go? You have the words of life. I'm challenging you this morning that Jesus alone, in your life and my life, Words spoken to give us power to be able to overcome has told us that you'll be obedient, walk my word, I will be with you, and I will make you prosperous in every way. Now, prosperous and prosperity, we've talked about this more than one time. I'm not going to go into it in, in large detail, but it's not the same thing as just having money. A lot of people who have money are not prosperous. They are hateful, wicked people. I could name names of people that you know right now, if I would name the name, who are millionaires, and in some cases billionaires, who are wicked people who have no joy whatsoever. That's not prosperity. You and I have been blessed far beyond that, not having near that kind of money, and yet we're prosperous because we have the joy of the Lord and the blessing of the family that they do not have, those people do not have. And so I would challenge you today, prosperity comes by definition of the Lord, and that is knowing who He is, knowing He's with you, and then going forth and being strong and of good courage. I challenge you this morning. That's his message to Joshua, who became successful. It's also the message that we have this morning, you and I. One last thing. The name Joshua in the Old Testament, under Hebrew, Aramaic, Joshua, when it is translated in the New Testament Greek, is Jesus. Jesus' New Testament is the same word as Joshua, Yeshua, in the Old Testament. And what God is telling them is, I am going to give you a leader who is always going to be with you because I'm always going to be with him. And he's going to make you prosperous. Be by your name. Father, I thank you today for the opportunity we have of being in the Word and having the Word. I ask, Lord, in Jesus' name, help us to see the key to having a prosperity that is pleasing to you. And that is finding contentment in you, allowing the Lord to be the Lord of our life. I pray in Jesus' name that you be with each person. Encourage them in the name of the Lord. And we'll thank you as we ask all these things. Just stand as I dismiss you this morning. Father, as we go to our homes, I pray that you will watch over and keep us from harm and danger. I pray, Lord, that this sermon will resonate in our ears, and most especially the words that come from the Word of God. Be strong and good courage. Help us, Lord, as we face the elements of the world we're going to face this next week, to know that you're going to go through them with us, and whatever it may take, you will be with us so that we can be courageous. Help us in Jesus' name and have the courage that we have will be rooted and grounded in you, and not in our own intellect, our own power, our own might, but rather, it will be rooted in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the hope we have in Jesus Christ, our anchor. Keep us from harm and danger. Once again, bring us back to the time appointed. The Father will thank you for us all these things. For your namesake and your glory, in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen.